Hey guys, what's happening? Niat here with Film Comics Explained, and today we'll be taking a look at the Velociraptors featured in the Jurassic Park universe. In real life, the Velociraptor was a genus of dromosaurid theropod dinosaur from the late Cretaceous period, which inhabited what is now the Mongolian Chinese border, along with other unique dinosaurs. The creatures were no bigger than a wolf, with an average length of 6 feet and a height that was rarely greater than 2. Unlike the Velociraptors featured in the films, the real-life counterparts actually had feathers across their body, giving them a bird-like appearance. When asked about how he viewed the Velociraptors, Mark Norell, who is the curator in charge of reptile fossils, amphibians, and birds at the American Museum of Natural History had said, The more that we learn about these animals, the more that we find that there is basically no difference between birds and their closely related dinosaur ancestors. Both have wishbones, brooded their nests, possess hollow bones, and were covered in feathers. In fact, if the Velociraptors were alive today, our first impression would be that they were just very unusual looking birds. The speedy carnivores had a long claw on the second toe of both feet, believed to have been used as a weapon that cut into the flesh of their prey, causing deep wounds. Since its appearance in the first film, the raptor has become a symbol of Jurassic Park and has appeared in all the films and games. In the Jurassic Park universe, the Velociraptors were actually based off the genus of another dromosaurid dinosaur known as the Deinonychus. The films, like the novels, follow the unusual taxonomy created by Gregory S. Paul, who incorrectly believed that Deinonychus, as well as a few other species of dromosaurids, could be classified under the genus of Velociraptor. As mentioned earlier, in the films, the Velociraptors were much larger than what they would have been like in real life, and this was essentially an executive decision by Spielberg, who wanted to make them look more terrifying. The raptors in the films were about 2 meters tall and 5 meters in length, weighing in at about 150 kilograms, enabling them to tower over most humans. The creatures were highly intelligent pack hunters that could run 65 to 100 kilometers an hour at full sprint, fast enough to outrun most other dinosaurs. They had a primitive level of vocalization which enabled them to coordinate attacks and call for help, and were also able of setting traps for their prey, outsmarting even the most experienced of hunters. The raptors have a major role in all five of the movies, appearing as antagonists in the first three, and then as supporting protagonists in the two preceding Jurassic World films. As the digital technology used to render them as advanced, their appearance has also changed slightly over the years. The raptors in Jurassic Park were a mixture of dark brown and green, and were all set to be female, while the ones in the sequel were much lighter in colour and were explained as being males. Jurassic Park 3 gave the creatures even more colours, with the upper half of their body showing purple markings and stripes of other colours. The raptors in this film also had quills on the top of their heads, which was a little nod from the creators acknowledging that it would have been more accurate to have given them feathers. Due to the change in splicing techniques adopted in Jurassic World, the four raptors in the film evidently displayed even more variations, with each one not having only a distinct colour tone, but also a unique personality. In the films, it's explained that InGen, the company responsible for cloning the dinosaurs, had actually wanted to use the raptors for military applications, which is why they were so different to the ones we had seen before. I mean, they were literally the first species of dinosaurs to develop a personal bond with humans, as was seen with the beautiful relationship Owen had with each of his raptors. In saying that, the animals were not tamed, and the relationship they had with Owen was based on respect and love, much like Daenerys' connection with her dragons, which meant that the Velociraptors were still extremely dangerous animals. She had them all attacking the fences when the feeders came. Well, the fences are electrified though, right? That's right, but they never attacked the same place twice. They were testing the fences for weaknesses systematically. Well, that's all for today, folks. Thanks to all of you guys who requested we take a look at the Velociraptors featured in Jurassic Park. If there's any other stuff you'd like me to check out, please don't hesitate to ask. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs>